G'day everyone, Lucas here from the Aussie Gamers Experience, and today I am taking a look at the new controller from Nacon, the Revolution Unlimited Pro Controller. Now first things first, I am going to take this out of its neat little box packaging here that it comes with, nice, nice little hard case, and uh, we'll take a look at what's, what it's got inside, and then I'm going to go away, use it for a little bit, come back and finish the video with what I think of it. Alright, so let's open up the box. This is, a, this is a nice little hard controller case, which is really neat. All right, let's go. We'll go with this thing up the top here first, which is a uh, braided USB controller. So it uses here, yeah, we've got the USB, what are those that called? Type A, I think it is, to, to plug into your console. Now, this is specifically made for the uh, the PlayStation 4, so it'll go into your, uh, your PlayStation 4. You can either charge it or play it in wired mode. I believe this also has a wireless uh, function as well, and has USB Type-C uh, on the other end, which plugs into the controller itself. USB Type-C, really good. It's a popular cable now, and uh, it's a really reliable cable as well. I really like how it uh, can go in either way. That's the cable. Uh, I think it's a three meter cable. I'll clarify that if I'm wrong later. All right, next in the box, we've got, right, some stickers. Uh, I don't get stickers. Some people appreciate stickers for me. Where, where do you put, where do you put these stickers? Are you putting them on your computer? You put them on your monitor? You put them on your, on your desk, uh, your car? I don't know. I don't know. Where, where are you putting your stickers when you get them in packaging? All right, we've also got probably warranty stuff in there. All right, uh, we've got a Revolution Unlimited Pro Controller microfiber cloth there, I guess, to clean it. I usually think of these when I'm, you know, with a screen, but the, I don't think there's any screens. But anyway, we'll have a look and see if that's a useful addition. All right, uh, let's skip the controller. We'll do that. have a look at that last. We've got this, and this to me looks like a small case of ammunition for some sort of firearm. <laughs> but we'll have a look at that in a minute. Revolution Unlimited Pro Controller it looks nice, all branded, and uh, recyclable, whatever that means. All right, and inside we've got right. So these are a bunch of weights. We've got two 16 grams, 14. I guess that's a 14, it might be upside down. Yeah, two 14 gram weights and two 10 gram weights. Now this this controller is weighted. Being a pro controller, you can put different weights in it to, um, to match however heavy you like the controller to be. So that's what these things are. They look like little dumbbells. The sort of dumbbells that you know you start off in the gym. It's a little, little mouse dumbbell. <laughs> All right, so also in here, down the bottom, we've got these sleeves. They just look like machined, like O-rings or whatever. But these are like the shafts for the thumbsticks. I'll have a look at them in a second. And what I understand of these is you could, they, like, you put them on the shaft and the, the thickness of this, oh, just all this sounds like innuendo, will restrict the travel of the stick. So if you want the stick to travel Further, you would use a thinner one and thicker if you want the stick to be shorter, the throw, and then you would adjust the settings for the controller in the Pro uh, Computer app. I'm not even sure what it's called yet. I haven't used it, but uh, I believe that's what you would do. So you adjust the, um, the the sticks travel, and then you physically adjust it using these things. There, there's the differences. All right, and on these outsides here, we've got the two thumbsticks, which these ones are the convex ones. Well, oh, how about we have it in the middle of the camera? The convex ones there, and there's another one on the other side, just there. And on the controller itself, it'll have the concave one, so you can adjust that there. All right, so that's a that little container, which has a bunch of accessories for you to adjust the controller the way you want it to be. Uh, let's have a look at the controller. So here's the actual controller. So we've got what is a pro controller for the PlayStation 4. However, we've got the layout from the Xbox One. So we've got the offset sticks. These are swapped around if you know, don't know what I'm talking about there. And got the uh, the concave uh, thumbstick tops on them. Now, how do these come off? Whoa! Okay, they come off... Uh, 
with a bit of force. They're not magnetic, I don't think. No, they, they click in. Yeah, they're not magnetic. I don't know, I, I think I like the magnetic ones. Although, you know, the magnetic ones aren't as, well, aren't as secure, but they're secure enough. I mean, I've never had one come off, so I'm a bit disappointed they haven't gone for the magnetic. It's rather just a clip that you feel like you're going to break. See, there's a little clip in there. Okay, there we go. that's an angle there. You can see the clip on the outside that will go into the thumbstick and lock on. And that's got the sleeves on there as well. You can adjust them. They're like, they must be like a mid. Oh no, they're really thin, those ones. So the ones that, he, that you get with it are much thicker. Alright, let's keep looking. The face buttons. We've got pretty regular buttons. They feel good. Let me just do this a little. Yeah, they feel nice. They feel nice enough. Oh, the thumbsticks feel nice too. Well, it's brand new, so it should feel nice. And we've got a touchpad there, which is the touchpad for the PS4, which has, what is that? Yeah, really tiny uh, PlayStation 4 symbols with the Nacon label on it. Okay, and we've got four lights along the bottom here, what look like lights. And I'm guessing that would be either modes or possibly what controller this is uh, linked to on the console don't know i'll have to find that out and we've got the share button and the options button or start and select for old gamers like me all right uh is that everything on the front now there's a light down the bottom here not sure what that is that might be power that's also a light around the ring of the right stick as well now the finish is kind of like a soft touch plastic However, this is like a smooth, soft touch, so it's getting grubby. Look at that. Now, this is how it has already been used by Snooks for his review, but that's got greasy, sort of grubby marks on it. This kind of plastic, I guess, surface is really susceptible to that. That might be where this will come in handy. But then again, if it wasn't that kind of plastic you probably wouldn't have that problem here yeah, see that sort of cleaned it off now but do you really want to be doing that all the time all right flicking around let's have a look on the back here i might need to have a look for myself oh that this is even grubby too from greasy fingers oh look i, I promise i'm not a like germaholic or germaholic not a germophobic or clean freak or anything but that sort of stuff is just it's it's very obvious very obvious to me right now all right i'm going to start off let's talk about these ones these are probably the most important buttons when i think of a pro controller down the bottom here okay these things will emulate the face buttons so you can instead of taking your thumb off the stick to press one of these buttons in a game you can your hands are already there so why not just press one of these buttons so that's the idea behind that all right but um I believe with this controller you could probably remap these to be whatever you want, any button. You could probably make it a an R an RB, uh, sorry, an R1 or an R2, but I'll have to check that in the software. Alright, so um, we've also got a profile button here, which may or may not flick through these lights for different profiles. And we've got it is a I think it's a wired and a wireless mode feature. So that's in wired, so you'd have to have a uh, the plug plugged into the top, the USB-C, or you flick to wireless mode and then it'll obviously connect to the wireless dongle, which I'll get to shortly. These buttons here... Oh, wow! Actually, that's really cool. This is... <clears throat> underneath here, we've got plus and minus for volume, and this is a mute button. Well, it's a microphone, so I'm assuming that's a mute button down there, which is uh, <clears throat> controls for your headphone jack. So when you're wearing headphones plugged into this, this will adjust your uh, your, con your controls for the volume and uh, and the microphone, which is something that a standard controller doesn't have, and is really appreciated to uh, to have on on such a controller like this. Um, what else? Oh, this thing here. It says one, two, and PC. So that's selected to PC now, and then you flick it down, and it says two. Oh, geez, that's not easy to flick. And then one. I don't know what that's for. I'll have to give it a try and research it. That's really stiff. Alright. 
And so that about covers all of the buttons. I oh, I haven't looked at the triggers. Here we go. So there's R1, R2. You have a click. Oh, they're really clicky. Wow, that's uh, they're they're quite clicky for uh, for PlayStation controller. And then we've got the triggers, which feel like they've got a lot more travel than the genuine controller does, and feel a bit firmer than the genuine controller. I don't know if that's adjustable. That's not what this is, is it? No, of course not. That would be stupid. All right, uh, so that covers, I think, all the buttons. Oh, didn't click the touch screen, the touchpad. Oh. Oh, that is a very, very unsatisfying click. You can hardly even notice that that's actually clicking in. In some places you can. Like if I press it there, it's... Yeah, look there, I can't even feel it clicking. There I can. There I can. Just, but... Oh, that could, they could take some click out of that and put it in here. But I think that the genuine ones were probably a bit like that as well. Sometimes you didn't really get the uh, sensation that you were actually clicking it in. That button there, well, that's nothing amazing. It's just a button. Alright, uh, now also, last thing before I miss it, uh, that's all the buttons I believe. Let's open up this little compartment here. That's where you put those little weights. So if you want to make it a little bit heavier, let's get a weight. So it kind of looks like a battery compartment. And you slot that in there, and that'll just make it a little bit heavier. And that's 16 grams heavier right there. Uh, me personally, I've never really been too fussed about... Uh, making my controllers heavier or lighter but you can and yeah some some people like like that and you got it on the other side as well so where's the other 16 grammar and that's in and then you can close them up and there you go your controller is uh, 32 grams heavier all right, so the last thing that's in the box, let's grab it. We've got the USB dongle, which is quite large. I don't know why it needs to be so large, but it is, and it gives you a bit of an L bend there. So if you plug it in the front of your control, uh, your console, uh, it can fold up in case it's in the way or something like that. And there we go, USB connector on it there. Uh, it's got a button on it, which I guess is for connectivity in case you've got to sync it up or something. Oh, it bends both ways. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's quite large. It's really nothing special. So there you go. That's the, uh, the an unboxing there of the Nacon, what's it called? Revolution Unlimited Pro Controller. It's a big name. Is it big? Revolution Unlimited Pro Controller for the PlayStation 4. Works with PC as well, as far as I know. Uh, however, it needs to be in pro mode. So, uh, I guess I'd better go away now and use it and see if it's any good. Learn about it, see what all the little uh, quirks and, um, and features are, and I'll come back at the next section of this video and tell you what I think about it. Cheers, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so let's bring this video home with my final thoughts on the Nacon Revolution Unlimited Pro Controller. A really big name and hard to remember to recite. So I've used the controller a fair bit now, playing a few different games like uh, Trials Rising. Not a massive Pro Controller style game, but it 
gets the job done and trying other games like Division and Destiny and things like that. So my thoughts on the on the controller itself, the controller is really nice. It feels good, it is brand new, so the triggers and the thumbsticks are all going to feel smooth like any of the proprietary controllers do. However, this one is a little bit bigger in the hand than the, uh, the standard PS4 controller. It's a little bit more sized like an Xbox One controller and also has the layout there with the thumbstick and the D-pad switched around, which some people may appreciate. I like it. Um, I'm not fussed either way, I like both of the controllers, but some people prefer like this, so now you've got the option. Uh, now, uh, the, the using it, it, it feels great, it's good in the hand, everything works fine. The buttons on the back, I feel they lack a little bit of tactile distinguishment between the two. They are kind of flat, as you can see. Uh, between the two it's hard to distinguish by feel probably something that you can get used to with time but initially it's easy to press the wrong one uh, I've used controllers in the past with real real distinct buttons and you can really tell which ones which they're very separate but these ones sort of mold into each other which is uh, it's it's good because it's flush and they, they don't sort of get in the way but you can be a little bit amb ambiguous as to which button you're pressing until you do get that muscle memory and get used to it now as for the sticks themselves, how you can customize them, me personally, I probably wouldn't customize them from the standard ones that are with it, but there are those options where you can put the thicker sleeves on it, which will reduce the amount of travel, but then you would obviously have to go and adjust it using the program on your PC or Mac, so that you could still get full movement, but in less space, if that makes sense, it's very, very technical, and I'm going to get to that in a second, but I hopefully won't make this drag on too long. Uh, the, you can remap any button to anything with exceptions to the touchpad can't be remapped and the share and options button can't be remapped either. These lights on the front that I was talking to earlier in the unboxing portion, they are used for your profiles so they will switch between the profiles uh, that you can save on the controller and it also is a battery indicator will be red if uh, the battery is dying. So look, overall, the actual controller itself is really competent, really comfortable, and, and really well made. Now the downfall is where we get into the full customization uh, of the, uh, the button layouts. Good thing is you can download profiles that other people have created and uploaded. So if you want a specific one that's really detailed for a game like Apex, you can download the Apex layout and it'll explain on, on, the, on the download what's been altered and what's been changed, what's been remapped. You can also get stuff for like Fortnite, Call of Duty, Destiny, Division, all that sort of stuff. So there's pre-made uh, uh, layouts and, and profiles that you can download and add to the controller, saving yourself from doing it. Now the problem is, I don't have a PhD in crazily super smart tinkering with these sort of things. Uh, I'm just, uh, what I would probably refer to, an average gamer. I just like to play video games and I enjoy them and I generally just use what I've got. Now going into the actual software, it's not user friendly at all. I, I find myself to be the kind of person who's pretty good with these kind of things. I use a lot of them and uh, generally they're intuitive in the way that, you know, you can work out pretty much what you need, what you can do, how to do it just by looking at the user interface. That's not the case with this Nacon one, where you go into the program and it is confusing as hell. There's stuff everywhere. Things don't work. You can't adjust things. Then you you go into the other sec sections where you think that you should have been able to do something, but you can't. You have to go somewhere else. It, it's really, really mind-bogglingly tricky. This controller, I'm not saying the program's broken. I'm just saying it's not easy to use. I, I, I couldn't work it out. In the end, after about an hour, a bit over an hour of tinkering with it, I just bloody well gave up. The only thing I worked out how to do is to make the ring around here all different colors and spin around. I'll see if I can get it to do that. So it's blue, and there's got the green and red. I don't know if that's showing up very well. Not really, let me turn the light off. And of course the camera is just going to adjust. <laughs> and then I've got this like purple spinning, what is it, purple, green, yellow, and it spins around. You know, that's something someone might like. I don't mind it, actually. I don't, like the, that color choice that I did is pretty crap, but I, I don't mind the, the circling RGB. 
I think that's pretty cool. So you could do all those kinds of things. That's about all I could actually work out how to do. I did muck around with the uh, the dead zones and I mucked around with um, the, the amount of force required for the triggers. But working out how to get it all right, this is well above my pay grade. I have no idea how to get that all right. Using the preset uh, like custom profiles that you can download is probably the way to go here. If all this sounds like it's probably a little bit too hard, then it probably is. For me, I would not use 10% of the capabilities of this controller. It really is a pro controller. It's not for somebody like me. If you think that you really want something where you can tinker everything to the finest, finest degree, then maybe the Nacon Unlimited, well, Nacon Revolution Unlimited Pro may be for you. Otherwise, I think maybe just stick with a proprietary controller, a lot cheaper. But yeah, look, in summing up, really good controller, but really hard to customize. Thank you very much for checking out this video. My name is Lucas, and I'm from the Aussie Gamers Experience. Please, if you're this far in the video, you may as well give me a like. I'd really appreciate that. And hit the subscribe button to come back and see more from the Aussie Gamers Experience. There is another video on this channel previous to this one by Snoogs, another one of our teammates, and he has put his thoughts in that video of this very same controller. Also, there is a weekly podcast called The Aussie Games Experience available on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, basically everywhere you can think of it, also on this YouTube channel. Coming up very soonly, soonly? Coming up very soon even, uh, Snoogs actually talks about the controller on that episode, 254 I believe it is. But that's enough rambling, thanks a lot. As always, I am Lucas, and until next time, I will see ya!